for joining us. I'm Kat. And I'm Jorgos. And this is Realistic DIYers. So, a few tool reviews coming up for you. Honest reviews, as they're bought and paid for by ourselves. We're not paid for these videos. Today, we're going to start talking about... A circular saw. A Bosch circular saw. Pick it up. PKS 18 LI. So we've decided to review this for you, as in many of our projects, it has been the go-to tool. Timbers, plastic, acrylics, metals. Yeah, if you change the blade. A little bit of a superstar tool. <laughs> so we decided to give you our thoughts, pros, cons. Um, so let's see what's in the box first of all. This is how it came. Um, when the box comes, don't throw it away because probably you want it to be sitting there because it has a nice base for the tool to sit without hurting the blade. So first of all, the tool. Then let's leave it facing down. Then a guide to help you cut sheet material. And then a manual. And that's it. It doesn't have anything else. Of course, it is a... It is battery powered, so if you have the universal, um, how is it called? <laughs> yes, this one. If you have the <laughs> universal battery that goes with all Bosch Green Line tools, then any of these batteries will go along with this tool. And also the thing is that you can combine it with many, many tools and it's not just for Bosch. It also goes along with other brands. Um, you can check out the information on the batteries on the... Um, Powerful or something like this, we will leave the description below. Yeah. So check yes, it out. all links to the tools that we do review will always be in our district description as well. So yeah. Okay. So let's go check out the features. So cut. Want to show? Oh. Okay. Right. Well, straight off, it's got the sturdy feel, but it's not overly heavy, so it's quite um, lightweight. Yeah, lightweight and agile to handle. Um, as always, you've got the safety guard, very important, works well, it's uh, easily manoeuvrable with, with your red lever as well. And of course it lifts as you cut. Safety button to release, so you can't, can't get going without it being safe. You have also your guide. Which is transparent so that you can see the line that you have drawn yeah. on the, on the timber ahead. that you are working on. You have 45 degree angle that you can change it to. Yep. For bevel cuts. There you go. <laughs> All the way across. Like Up to 45 degrees. And you've also got the great depth as well. So a little change here to release it. And then it goes all that way down there. And back up. And then just tighten it. Whoops. Tighten it like so. Yep. The blades on the Bosch are 150 mil. 150 millimeters. 150 millimeters. Which is fantastic for any timber that you're going to use around the house. Two by twos, Pretty two by fours, tabletops, countertops. They're going to be probably your deepest cuts. But this will, this has a cut of 48 millimeters, which okay. you yeah. were actually telling me a very interesting fact earlier that I have learned from my world of knowledge. That although we're saying two by fours, two by twos, and we're saying this has only got a blade of 48 millimeters, here's the secret. Although they're sold to you as, for, uh, as two by four. two by two or two by four, which means or it's about 50 what it means it's about 51 or 52 millimeters, that is because they sell it to you and measure it to you before it actually dries and shrinks. So it shrinks down to let's have a look, it's two by four. 45. Perfect. So generically, it's going to do all the big jobs and the small jobs around the house as well. A couple more features. Right at the front in your eye line, along with that guide that we showed you, it does have your own measurements in centimetres. So as we continue to talk about the blade, we've spoken about the depth and the size of the blade, as you know, is 150 millimetres. Now, 150 millimetres can be quite challenging to find. Generally, they are 160 millimetres. This is just a tip to watch out for. So Bosch, actually the fitment is 16 millimetres and most blades that you're going to find are 20, 20 millimetres just here. But if they are going to be 20 millimetres, they do come with a, a, a ring, a type of washer that means they're going to fit well with a Bosch. 
you just need to make sure when you order that blade it is going to come with a ring. Another good thing that I wanted to mention is that here at the back attached there's a small allen key that helps you remove the blades. In order to remove the blades, well first of all you need to wear gloves. <laughs> Always have gloves at hand. So well, the reason why I think this is superb is because generally, I don't know about you, but when you're doing DIY, it can get a bit chaotic. Where did I put this down? Where was the last time I had this tool? Where have you seen this? Where you ha gets a bit like that. That is always at hand and ready to change the blade. You're thank never you going for it in the chaos. In order to change the blade, you press a small button that it has here, which gives you a nice grip. Turn it a bit. There you go. It clicked. And I can remove the blade. Be careful of your toes. <laughs> we need them. I need them. The other way. Actually, another secret. It's about us. We do a bit of dancing, so we do need our toes. Maybe we'll see us dancing one day. <laughs> there you go. The blade is out. You can remove it. That was the safety ring. And here's the blade. You we can change it that easily. Thank you, Kat. Bring it back. Put it up there. It locks. And then after talking about the blade, of course, the motor runs the blade. The motor you found strong enough. Well, it's a, it's a battery-powered um, motor, so it, you shouldn't expect pinnacles, but it's, it's working very well, pretty much. But if you didn't have the battery-powered, you wouldn't have the cordless. You've been in the garden with this, you've been in the attic with this, it doesn't matter where you go, you can, you don't have the cords to trip over, but you also have the freedom to move. So I think cordless is absolute necess necessity when you're moving around in different rooms all the time. You're not in a stationary workshop doing yeah, projects every day. Also, if you don't have power because you fix mm. in your house, it's better to have a... Mm. a um, to have battery powered than you know asking mm. your neighbours to give you electricity. Just remember that when you do lock it in, it's actually rotating the opposite way to what you expect because of when the disc is working, the rotation, the di the direction of exactly. the rotation. So it won't be as you expect. Now it's ready to be used. Like as we continue, something else. Let me flip this around. So you've also got your extraction port, which is very handy when Bosch tools think again about all their universal household DIY tools, this can connect directly to your Bosch vacuums. But it's not just one Bosch vacuum. Universal VAC 15, uni, um, Advanced VAC 20, which we have, you can attach it to, um, to the 18 volts powered vacuums that Bosch has, and it also um, fits the professional um, line, the blue line, vacuums but it also you can actually uh, attach it to most of the vacuums that you might have at home no problem then but again when you're doing the realistic diy you're in small spaces you're in spaces that you live in and you've got to have some sort of control over the mess that you make yeah. so, <laughs> so it it's... will give you as, as you cut yeah. uh, through sheets or timbers um, it, it will extract most of it but it won't extract everything you should also have this in mind I'm actually going to ask Jorga to talk about something a little bit more complex. So not necessarily uh, cons, but challenges we might have faced. Um, one that comes to mind is the guide, where yeah. it sits under the motor. So if we want to discuss about things that are challenging with this one, well, first of all, it's the base, the plate that it has here. Other brands are coming with, a, with an aluminium plate and this one is some kind of a cast iron of sorts which means that it bends a bit as you work it's not so sturdy which is fine if you're doing rough um, jobs like you know like cutting timbers for a shed but it's not so, it doesn't give you the opportunity to be so accurate with um, other other jobs another thing with this space is that it, it doesn't have um, a slot to be inserted into a guide so that you can do absolutely um, straight cuts. But there's a jig you can create so that you can work around this problem and stay tuned for the next video because we're gonna show you how to make this baby work, cut straight lines without any problem. So follow the link up there or there. So or down there, who knows? Or down there, yeah. <laughs>
There's a link to, to creating that jig and what we can do with it. Yes, not jigs. only this jig, but uh, just to, to cut straight, but also a few different jigs that you can use to, um, to make this baby work great. Yeah. Right, um, so as it comes out of the box, um, the, the base, the other problem is that it's not absolutely um, perpendicular to the blade, um, which means that it needs a little bit of adjustment so the, you cannot really move the blades, but you can adjust somehow the, um, the plate, the base. Now the way to adjust the plate, the base, again, you cannot, um, you cannot unscrew it because it's, it's firmly attached, but you can hammer it. Actually, this is exactly what I did. I had a mallet, not a, not a proper uh, it's hammer. Hmm? Is it riveted? Yes. Yes. So uh, when I got it, when we got it, um, I had I, I was using a mallet just to bring it to where I wanted it to be. Don't tell it's not... <laughs> Also, there's a stop. Realistic DIYing. <laughs> also here at the back, there's a stop for the for the angle cut here, and it was um, it wasn't in place. So I had to bend it in order to make it come perpendicular to the to the blade. There's tons of videos that show you how to do it for other plates that are actually adjustable. But for this one, what I used was uh, a mallet, like a hammer kind of thing, and um, pliers. Pliers, yes, thank you, thank you. And not only the blade is is not perpendicular, but also the guide here. You need to adjust it uh, so that the lines align with the blade, both in um, perpendicular cuts as well as uh, 45 degrees cuts. You need to adjust this by just adjusting this small screw here. Another challenge is that the motor is quite low compared to the plate, which means that if you want to have a straight edge in order to keep your line straight, then uh, with most straight edges you cannot use it. So as I said, there is a work around it and we'll show you in the next video. Whilst you're talking about guides, it also comes with an additional tool, utensil, yeah. cooking utensil. <laughs> comes with additional guide, I don't want to say Hold. too many times over. Let's read first. So right at the front, in your eye line, you do have the centimetres engraved on the front. And then you also have this guide that you can hold alongside. So it goes from almost zero to 22 centimetres or 220 millimeters. Now, this is not the best way to cut, but it's, it's, uh, it helps you do some rough cutting compared to freehand. It's quite handy, actually. So as you have noticed, the, the blade on this saw is to the, well, left side as you hold it, right side as you see it now. So this has a, is a positive and a negative at the same time. So when we bought this, we thought that it would be more convenient since we're right-handed, you know, it would be more easy to use it. But here's the catch. Uh, if you want to cut timbers, <coughs> if you want to cut timbers that are um, two inches, when you cut it on the edge, like you want to make your own shed, let's say, the plate is supported by the timber which is on the outside, on the right hand here which means that as you cut, you're losing the support. Well, if the blade was to the right side or left as you see us now, then as you cut, it would support the saw as you cut through. So this is a thing to consider. But on the other side, if you're cutting through sheet material and you're right-handed, then you can just run it as you go without having any problems. Whatsoever, because if it was if if the blade was on the other side, then this would mean that you would have to go through a certain stage and then remove yourself and relocate, which is <laughs> not the, not ideal when you mm. when you're using a circular saw. So. so this is something both positive and negative. Which I think you you don't think about until you've been in those situations. Yes. So with these clever insights that we have learnt along the way, if we are helping you out. Please remember to like, subscribe and bell all so that we can keep helping you along before you make, before you have the same challenges we have along the way. So, so actually we have a little bit of sunshine today. So let's take it outside, give it a run and show you what it can do.
Follow us. <laughs> As always, safety first. Mask, goggles, ear defenders, all set. So setting up your workspace, we've got the Bosch workstation, portable workbench, absolutely fantastic for tight spaces outdoors on the road, any job. You'll find our link to the review that we will be doing below. Secure the legs. Attach the dogs to hold your item secure. Measure your line so you've got a clear perpendicular cut. Attach your extraction port, especially for those spaces indoor when you're doing a bit of living room DIY. And switch on, switch, switch off. Uh, hello, hello, switch on, switch up. No, he hasn't done it. Switch on your vacuum. <laughs> okay, actually this is a great opportunity. Keep an eye out for the debris that sprays just under through um, Yordis's elbow. So now you'll see the difference between the vacuum attached and the vacuum not attached. So now we go with the extraction from the vacuum and you can see as Yordis indicates, when using power tools, Bosch does recommend the false air intake hole of the vacuum hose must be open. All right, on to hard wood. So a beautiful piece of beech wood. So with this being three millimeters, Thicker, that's going to already challenge the blade but you'll be able to hear the difference between the motor running on the softwood and the motor running on the hardwood it is slightly more challenged now Yoris does use a little bit more control here he does pull back a little bit gives the motor a bit of a chance to accept the challenge of this hardwood doesn't push it lets it go at the pace it needs to skill here is not to push it. Hey, all that way. Whoosh! And look at that. A few burn marks, but a clean cut. Brilliant. But wait, we do need the authorities to uh, double check. Inspector, is this uh, acceptable? So as you saw, it will serve you great. Though, since we got it last year, uh, Bosch has uh, launched a, a new version, which is called Universal Circ uh, 18V53, yeah? So uh, that one has, they have taken into consideration the, thing that, the things that they didn't consider with this one, like a guide, a, a rail guide on the plate, the plate is aluminium, and the blade is 160 millimeters. So uh, our recommendation is that one. Price-wise, this one is a cheaper option with a little bit less than a hundred pounds or dollars or euros. Uh, whilst the other, the newer version, the Universal Circular 18V53 uh, is a little bit over a hundred pounds. So it's not too much in it, but if you are setting yourself up to do a DIY project, you might be buying a few tools at the same time and that's when it would make the difference. Yeah. So, the Bosch. PKS 18 <laughs> LI. It has served as well. Um, I guess you would describe it as a semi-professional. It's um, it's not your high street brand and it's not your professional um, blue line Bosch or construction site. Yeah, or tools. the Waltz or. It is fantastic. You've used it on so many occasions yep. and it has not failed you. So hopefully. Yep. Our recommendation will also serve you well. So now we've given you some insight and hopefully you have seen and you can go to the links to see the projects that we've used this on as well. You can also let us know about the projects that you go ahead and use it on. Yep. Um, but we highly recommend this and we hope you've enjoyed the review today. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks for joining us.